A strong and independent woman is something to behold. She pays her own bills, buys her own things, and she doesn't let a man affect her stability or self-confidence. She is a soul-rich woman. Are you ready to be rich doing what you love? Be on purpose and in control of your life again. At For Women Who Love the F Word podcast, we will be openly talking about getting more clients online, getting recognition as the leader and female entrepreneur, and also the F Word, being fabulous, having freedom, and financial independence. It's time to own and love the F Word. Welcome to the show. All right. So right now, let's bring on uh, Dr. John. He's here. And uh, we just want to uh, get Dr. John to share his experience. I think we are very, very um, happy to have Dr. John here today to share his journey with us and then how podcasting, uh, why he did podcast. You know, he I've known Dr. John for the last 20 years. He has been a dinosaur online. And it was so difficult to convince this doctor to really get his ass online. No, but he is great, okay? So how are you, Dr. John? Yes, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. I think um, yes, it's been wonderful listening to um uh, Joanne. And Joanne is a very fantastic uh, podcast coach. So I'm selling uh, <laughs> You know, that bit, but it's fantastic because uh, it does uh, mean a lot to me, uh, primarily because, um, well, there's a philosophical uh, spin to podcasting as well, not just the business aspect as well. And I think that's when, as a medium, it opens itself up to uh, different people. So firstly, it would be the people who want to listen to your story and there are various, various people out there that you do not know yet, right? So I think the possibility is more of uh, ourselves, the belief that we have. So, and it's true, when uh, Junish first uh, approached me, I was like, what oh, podcasting? I, what, what is the medium all about? And uh, I said, wow, there's a lot of things to uh, prepare technically and they keep telling me, no, it's not. You have a story and the story needs to be heard, right? It's just a matter of um, like in this morning going through how you structure the story and then how you present it. And then later the technical aspects that come, uh, you know, with all the other details. But the important thing is that you have something that you want and then to share. So for me, it's more like at this stage in my life, it's about uh, leaving a legacy of uh, knowledge, of information, and um, lessons I've learned primarily from uh, mistakes, uh, from errors, and all that. And it's a point of, uh, firstly, reflection, and then secondly, um, just sharing this, you know, with people who can do something with it. So the impact um, of it all is that... um, it's been some months since it's really been launched. Um, I've had uh, quite a number of uh, people uh, in you know my community, Facebook, and all that, um, just writing back to me and saying, "Wow, you know, you talk about this and mention some things or sharing the posts and all that." It goes on every week. At the same time, um, it has gone around the world because I'm listening to friends globally who have uh, also shared that. So to me, I find that this is just spot on, the idea of uh, me just sharing my bit and um, whether or not for me is I move on to a different stage in my life right now about uh, maybe going more into consultancy is really late that runway for me. So I think uh, it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, If you are like in the beginning like me, unsure, not sure, Uh, The best thing to do is just to take the leap first and try and then put it out there, put a message out there, like a test bait. Then you can just adjust accordingly. So currently right now, I am uh, contemplating on the second season where I'll go deeper depending on the feedback I've already uh, been receiving. And that's when I can even uh, touch more lives in in a way that uh, really makes sense. So, 
It has been a fantastic journey. Uh, yes, you, you have to put in the, the work and the effort. You have to uh, put in that kind of uh, focus to it, yes. But the spin-off from it uh, would be really, really wonderful. Right, so this has been my uh, sharing. So open to any uh, questions that you may have. Very fortunate to have and very blessed to have uh, Dr. John with us. So if you have anything uh, pertaining the journey, getting onto podcasting, you know, how, uh, how did he do it? You can actually ask him. Uh, in fact, uh, he, it was before COVID that he recorded the episodes and it was at our, at our studio. So there was no need to invest in his own equipment. But because now there is COVID, uh, Dr. John just bought his equipments and has so much trouble finding all the microphones and the equipment because everything is so out. If not, it's double the price. Okay, So it's really very, very tough time for, for everybody who wants to get onto the bandwagon of you know, doing podcasting and getting great equipment. Uh, okay, So Jaren is asking Dr. John, how many episodes have you recorded and where can I assess these? Okay, so um, the... Well, there are a few ways of doing it, but I think um, over the course of a few days concentrated, I had uh, set aside some time. And so I think it took me about three to four days of recording. And uh, it, uh, the whole journey uh, was about, I think, 55 episodes, if I'm not mistaken, or 56. And then after that, uh, it's launched. So the whole idea then is that you get into the groove rather than, uh, you know, spacing it out. And it's actually, it, it does mean that there's a lot of uh, work that has to be done, not only by yourself, but, you know, by the coach as well. But it is focused. So about there, one whole season has been completed. Um, where is it there? Quite a number. I have lost count. I don't know how many places where they are at the moment. Right, Janisha? Yeah, you, you have really gone to 20 platforms, more than 20 platforms, yeah. Online. That's why we got the distribution and the reach. Yes. So, Jaren is saying, wow, within four days. So, Dr. John, why don't you share your, your experience? At the beginning, you, of course, you were resistant and then you had certain things that were on your mind. You know, you were toggling between writing a script, right? You're like so insistent, you No, know? Then we like tug of war. You tug of war with me. Then you tug of war with Joanne. <laughs> like, hey, I got to write my script. <laughs> why don't you share how you break through your mindset? Um, well... I, a lot of it has to do with uh, a certain sense of how perfect you want it, perfection. So if you insist on being a perfectionist, then uh, one of the things I can take away is that it will be very hard to uh, take off. So the thing is to just let it go, tell the story, um, do not be worried about errors. And then I realized um, hmm, maybe I should have a script and so, you know, my uh, episode is like about 12 minutes, 40 minutes at the most. Um, so in order to do that, you need like X number, like 10,000 words. So can you imagine if you write the script for everyone, it's going to take a long time. So I did that for like about three episodes, right? It took a lot of effort and went in and followed the script, even had a PowerPoint slide in front of me and I click, click, click. And I remember Joanne was beside me. Joanne, you remember? She was like, okay, okay. Then she asked, mm, when I tell your story, just tell your story. So for the next fourth episode, whatever, I just told my story. And then she paused. And then she said, you know what's the difference? You're very natural as you told the story. You know, when you write a script, yeah, script, it sounds maybe uh, very nice and all that, but it's scripted. So here's the thing, when, when you have that flow, then I realize, wow, yes, I have this point. Just need to split it up, spread it out, and before you know it, you have your episodes. there, And they come in uh, batches, right? So uh, what I took away was um, it, it go for excellence, yes, but not to the point of uh, error-free perfection. It's not going to happen. Secondly, you have your story. 
let your story come out. And then from there, it just flows, right? And, and do in batches because it does help it that um, you might bunch it together. And before you know it, wow, it was that 55 done. <laughs> okay, very good. And actually, well, on your journey, right, what were some of the things that you considered, I mean, when you decide on the content of your podcast? I mean, a lot of people are always very distracted by the content, right? Oh, should I be talking about this or that? How do you eventually decide that you wanted to focus on specific youth issues? Because youth issues alone, there's so much. I mean, you've seen so much in the last 30 years running Care Singapore and on your journey, right? But why do you choose only that specific ones? Don't tell me because not enough episodes, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Uh I, I think it's more of um, bearing in mind uh, who the audience is. Um, so for me, I had a few people in mind. And so the batching uh, came along with those people in mind. For example, one of the uh, groups that I had to uh, or rather want to reach out would be parents of teenagers. And then going through with the journey of what they will go through possibly uh, dealing with their kids and so the issues that just come out so it comes out very naturally and with a lot more um like so so you you have that person in mind at first and then from there you develop so to me then it became um we have so many how do you then choose so which is why i'm gunning for uh, season number two and I remember there was a concern that you had. I remember you say, oh, but Janisha, you're running so rich woman. Then I'm a man. <laughs> remember that the first conversation, the first day you sat down with me and you're like, hey, but then how? Uh? So what was, how did you, how did you tell yourself? <laughs> yeah. So, so I was uh, kind of joking that, you know, people were wondering what happened. I mean, how come? And then, so in order to to answer that question, the question would be firstly why, and my answer was uh, very simple, rather in the form of another question. And that question is why not? Why not? It's not so much the gender as um, getting the job done and get it done very very well, and I believe Tunisia uh, and team has done it very very well and make it very uh, seamless. I wouldn't say painless because you had to put in the effort. Uh, I would say seamless and I would say that it is effective, right? So back to my answer to that question of why will be why not. Yeah, so there you have it. Okay, so Janet has got a question. How do you feel when you launch 55 episodes and what were the responses like after you shared? I mean, you, you did say that people actually come up to you and and did feedback to you, but what were some of the specifics? Yeah, so uh, firstly, I remember I did it over, it was last year, um, Christmas season. So it was a very blessed Christmas season for me um, because I'm a person of faith. And so I feel that, wow, this is just a good time for me to do it. And so, number one, I felt very uh, fulfilled and accomplished that at least this portion is done because I'm really moving into legacy kind of, uh, you know, phase in life. Um, but the responses that came back were um, ever slowly. Uh, and then when the full episodes came on and five came up, and it was posted in more and more platforms. And then with uh, participation for me in Facebook, LinkedIn, and all that with my contacts and all that. And then the word started spreading and sharing. And people asked me questions like, wow, why did you do it? Um, and then some of the questions were asked, uh, a bit difficult for me to answer, would be, how do you do it? And how do you get all this? this because I don't know the full uh, flash details. Um, Today, I had a better idea through uh, listening to uh, Joanne, right? So, so all these questions were asked of me. And at the most, I just said, yeah, why don't you um, check it out? Check it out, uh, you know, check out So Rich Woman and all that. So there were, um, I think, questions of uh, people saying, 
oh, how did you do this? It was just so, you know, and they were asking like, wow, before that you didn't have it, now you have it. So it's, it's inspiring them. But then, and I would say this very uh, carefully also, is that when you want to do it, then you have to put your heart and mind in it. Um, if if one that uh, something that uh, holds you back is because you you're not you know you're not sure how to do it the uncertainty is because of um, just being anxious a little bit I would say just go for it your heart is there just do it but then having your heart there you need to put your hand in it you really have to work on it because then the rewards will come so to me um, lots of my friends ask me. And some say they also want to do it. I say, sure, um, it's good to have that, but then you must also put aside that kind of uh, time and effort. Yeah, so this has been my, my journey. Joanne asked, uh, what are the struggles or objections you have before doing the podcast? Uh, number one, I don't have enough things to say. Number two, uh, my voice not good enough. Number three, uh, will people listen? And um, all, all, <laughs> all this were just anxieties. Um, people do listen. I, uh, in fact, just the other day, someone was asking me, "Hey, you know your your Shopee, uh, website uh, went down. Cannot listen to your episode. Ask me to check what's wrong with it." I'm like, "Oh, okay, okay. I, I didn't know about it." And then telling me, oh, it's up already. So I'm like, oh, okay, you're also listening to. I wasn't sure, but people are. They One of the things about podcasts is that and it's uh, powerful as a medium, even when we are consuming lots of uh, visual um, diet, right, to screen time and all that, is that um, people listen. They just pop on the episode. It comes on. It plays on a playlist. And... Uh, particularly for Spotify, right? You just organize your playlist and if they are moving from point A to point B, you will listen. Or during a uh, circuit breaker or lockdown, people have more time and you just listen by playlisting. So I find that it's a very powerful medium now as well to get your message across. Yeah. So all my objections were all, um, you know, just anxieties only. <laughs> Later on, you actually just took the microphone and then you refused to let it go. Let it go. <laughs> you just hug the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Dr. John, um, okay. So, we really start, we can't stop. Mm. So, what, what now, after now you are doing, you're thinking about your season two and you're reflecting and just the other day, we're having this conversation. I mean, I, I still feel that at first you say, oh, I'm very busy because you, you said that because now care, and you know, because of COVID, you have to bring care online as well. And then you're so busy uh, organizing all these schedules. How are you going to find time? You know, I know I'm, I'm like chasing you for schedule as well. <laughs> How are you going to find time to really work on your season two? I, I think um, I'm looking forward to getting those equipment in and then find the way possible of uh, doing it um, from my own computer with support. So I think that's one of the things. Number two, of course, uh, I'm listening to uh, what the needs are. And they have shifted a little bit, particularly because of um, this COVID pandemic. Uh, there are certain sets of anxieties and certain fears that people may have that can be addressed in messaging as well. And uh, so mm, the issue with them would be of prioritizing and uh, putting the scheduling done uh, correctly and then having the equipment support. Yeah, so I think that's, that's how I'll be uh, looking at it. Mm, I love that. So um, if you have any more questions, if you have a questions for Dr. John, please uh, feel free to type it into the comments below this video. Uh, we'll be happy to address them. He is very gracious to be here. He attended the full training because he didn't know what was it about. And then he actually took on and took a leap of faith to do podcasting. And today we invited him here to join the full program so that he also know what really is happening and what really how it works behind the scenes as well. So Jaren and Ramon, both of you, are, feel free to ask questions. And of course, Jeanette, uh, Jeanette just now said that she has more questions than Joanne. Uh, can you also 
uh, put your questions into the chat and then we can continue to get Dr. John to share with us uh, his thoughts on the things that you're talking about, he's been sharing about. Actually, I'm very curious, uh, John. You... How, uh, you know, you have so much things to say. Like what Jeanette, actually, I was also about to ask the same question. How do you do it in between 10 to 12 minutes when there's so much things to share always? You have so much experience, 30 years on the ground. You know, you have so much things to share. How do you do it in, in 10, 10 minutes? Yeah, so actually, um, I, what I found is that the topics, you just need to uh, split up. And the only thing there is about having a few parts to the same topic but with different aspects. And uh, having a story and a lesson to it is already 10 minutes, honestly. Um, I also know that you need to bunch it so that it is just nice for consumption. It's not too long, maybe boring. And so, yeah, so this is where I said, if you've had the life experiences, and I think you guys have, then it's a matter of um, looking at the content and uh, maybe draw the appropriate diagram, like, you know, mind map or a fish bone to structure out the stories that you have part one, part two. And that's just where coaches come in and to ask you questions about what can be fleshed out deeper, more, according to your audience. Um, so for, for me, in 10 minutes, just one point, but that point is uh, sandwiched with an example, with a story, with a lesson, and then a call to action, or possibly what can be in the next episode. And so before you know, you have about four or five episodes because you do a wrap-up at the end as well. And so you actually have a lot. Um, and before you know it, you find that you, you don't have enough time. Yeah. Hmm. I love that. How did Adeline think and view your podcast, actually? Did, did Adeline think, uh, listen to your podcast? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I, I think she did. <laughs> but not all. <laughs> because she's listened to you for a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Okay, cool. Okay, Joanne, have you got any more questions? Uh, Last round before we let him take a break and then we do a wrap up for this uh, podcast session. Just one last question, Dr. John. Yeah, I uh, just want to thank you so much for uh, gracing this event. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, just, I mean, apart from the launch that you shared with your friends, how was the responses out from your family? And did they have any objections to you when you share with them that you're going to do uh, the podcast? I think it was uh, not, not, no, no objections at all. Basically, they see it as an extension of uh, my work and my sharing. I've been uh, devoting all these years to helping and then now to encapsulate I think one of the things that is still um, not done yet, which is uh, getting a book out. So the next best thing to getting a book out is actually getting your podcast out. Uh, you're getting your podcast out, you can actually split up, you know, to in the airwaves and to the internet, bytes and bits and bytes to an even bigger audience. And then gathering that, even I was uh, talking to Janisha, right, that this can then be captured into a book later on. So to me, uh, it has been encouraging journey. Um, people are asking, when's the next one? So, so I mean, for them, uh, they are saying, oh yeah, it's the next episode that will come, you know, because now I think the release is about to 30 something already. So there's still 20 more that works. But what they didn't know is that um, season two will be coming up later. And that's when I, I'll go deeper. So then again, it's extending uh, what I feel be my sharing as well. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a prelude or uh, like a like, like a trailer to what you're going to share in season two? I think uh, going deeper and also thinking more about uh, what's happening and this uh, COVID experience for many people and how are they dealing with uncertainty and dealing with changes. And also um, because of the agency that I'm uh, running, right, and 
working with the students who are impacted. These young people are impacted, so it's a new generation that will be impacted by having to deal with uncertainty as part of their, their life. And above all, which is harder for all, will be the parents, right? The parents who are going through this themselves with a very tough economy and yet bringing out their, their children with this great uncertainty as well. So I think I will grapple with that and then have issues to talk about it, bite size again, that uh, can be applied the moment you hear the podcast. Yeah, so that, that is my goal, yeah. Okay, so the question is, what's the most rewarding part of your podcast journey? I think um, it's the ability to have my messaging or my message that I want to share. Um, Go to audiences that I didn't even um, expect. So one of the hats I'm wearing is actually I volunteer with the uh, Commonwealth um, the Commonwealth Group of Nations, but on the youth work aspect. And uh, without me knowing, um, they were going through, because currently in my sector now, the youth work sector, we are dealing with this whole thing called digital youth work. And uh, without me knowing that one of the professors on the other side from Europe took my I know my podcast and then uh, displayed it as a example of a, uh, how we are doing digitization. Now, see, we never even thought about it. So for me, the rewarding part is that, wow, the impact, um, the potential of the impact uh, is even beyond your imagination. So my intended audience was this, but then now it has spread into a much broader audience. So for, you know, you have a story that has to be told. Why just restrict it to people that you know? Uh, The multiplier impact, Um, You know, we just carry on. It's like you drop a pebble into a pond and then you find the ripple impact. Yeah, so in the same way, I think I didn't expect it. But now now that I know it, um, you ask me, okay, it it feels a bit good to know that um, your messages has gone out. But it also gave me a little bit of pressure. I said, wow, then I must speak properly uh, because they may not understand my singlish. Other than that, other than that, then the point is that your messages has the potential of going out and touching more lives than you ever can think about. So that's been pretty, uh, pretty exciting for me. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You mean your podcast was being picked up and presented as an example? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And how do you know that it was being picked up and presented? Did they tell you or? Um, yeah, because I'm in the committee. And what has happened is that um, so the committee, we are basically the older people, but the younger people have come on. They are interning and all that. So they, are, they were given the job of collecting, collating resources. And um, she, this lady actually wrote to me and it was kind of by the way kind of thing. I said, oh, you know, we need to gather. Just like we gathered your, your podcast as an example, Amma, you did I didn't know. So I went in to check and say, yeah, it's there. So that potential, I mean, if I were to look at it the other way, if I didn't do it, then the opportunity will have never come. So you never know. So just take the leap and do it. Yeah. Wow. Very inspiring. How come I don't know about all this until today? (laughs) You never share with me. (laughs) Secret agent. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to tell you. Uh. <laughs> yeah. But very good. I'm very happy for you. I'm, I'm very glad that you you have, wow, so much results that I didn't even know of. Hmm, that's very amazing. And you just celebrate your birthday recently. You know, all <laughs> June babies. So what, what was really on your, what is your next milestone and your legacy that you're looking <sighs> at? Yeah, well, if um, getting through on uh, season two and then looking, I was just asking Janisha uh, the other day, right? How was the ebook? Um, how's the, how does the ebook get uh, 
you know, conceptualized or even be part of uh, my legacy. So I think that's probably the thing that I'm looking out for now. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so honoured that we are connected and I hope that I can continue to serve you as you build your dreams. And if you love this episode, and I hope that you did, rate it 5 stars. Give us that glowing review because it will help more women around the world finding this Soul Rich Woman podcast. Alone you are strong, together we are unstoppable. Now share this with every woman who needs it because this is how we are changing the world, one woman at a time. As always, get out of your comfort zone and go towards the dreams you've always wanted to achieve. For women who love the F word, being fabulous, having freedom and financial independence. My dear soul rich woman, sending you my love and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.